All right, Abs faithful, the Avalanche lose the game to Boston and lose Arturi, Arturi Lekkanen. What else is new? Like how and when can this stop with the injuries? So we'll talk about that, how the Avalanche navigate this never-ending list of injuries, and they can't dwell on it too much. they got a game to play. We'll talk about the Avalanche and Flyers tonight. Another episode of Lockdown Avalanche coming at you. Your Locked On Avalanche, your daily podcast on the Colorado Avalanche. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Lower body injury, lower body injury, lower body injury, upper body injury, upper body, lower body, upper, lower, whatever. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in and making Locked On Avalanche your first listen of the day. Always appreciated. We are part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And he is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom. I am Chris Maselli. Follow us on our social media outlets, LOP and underscore Avalanche on Twitter, Locked On Avalanche on Instagram. Questions, comments, concerns, opinions, Locked On Avalanche at gmail.com. And follow us on our YouTube channel over on YouTube. Hit subscribe, get notified when the new show goes live. We'll talk about the Bruins game specifically in a little bit. Uh, but the the one thing that we, we will talk about right now, which came out of that Bruins game, there's a lot that came out of the Bruins game, but uh, the one thing that sticks out like a sore thumb, another injury that you can add to the list of injured avalanche players. And this one hurts because it's a, another key player in Arturi Lekkanen. And I didn't like how it happened. Um, and I even, again, if you follow on Twitter, I, I didn't, I didn't see the actual injury in real time. It was when he never came back out for the second period. And then even after the game was over, they never showed anything on altitude. Like, Oh, it was probably this that I saw anyway. Um, and then when the game was over, you saw that he just got like body slammed to the ice for no reason the, the play the puck was was dead um the, the the goalie had covered up the puck they blew the the whistle and uh who was it was um who was it that that threw him it uh blah 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 i have to look it up now mcavoy it was charlie mcavoy who That's just right. threw him to the ice for yep. no reason and he you know he it seems like it might be an arm or something, but we're probably going to be out uh, Arturi Lekkanen for a little while. Thoughts on that play, and then we'll talk about all these injuries because it, it's just it's to the point of ridiculous. When it comes to the injury itself, yeah, it was, I mean, especially at that point in the game, a little too rough, really no need for it, and we are paying the price for it. Boston mm -hmm. gets the defeat the defending Stanley Cup champion and go on about their business, we have to recoup. Um, when it comes to the injuries as a whole, I've seen a couple people complaining about what is going on with strength and conditioning. It's nothing to do with that. It has nothing to do with it. these. These guys have been playing hockey since they were like 12. They've been through. They know what to do. They know how to get up. This is the, the other side of puck luck. It's just it's bad luck for the Avs. And this is something that... When it comes to face-offs, Nathan McKinnon, Kale McCarr, and injuries. It's what we talk about here on Locked on Avalanche. It happens yeah. all the time. It doesn't matter what year it is. It's, yeah. it's what we talk about. Yes, they're key injuries, but I think it it only makes it that harder, that much harder to swallow when you're not getting that next guy up mentality. It's It feels very top-heavy, and you're not really, other than Cogliano in the Boston game, you're not getting somebody stepping up. So it feels like you're shedding your your potential talent and nobody's really stepping up. E even the Eagles, nobody's really on fire well, right now. Everybody's just kind of in survive mode. Yeah, I mean, nobody's like go like just coming out of like the woodwork out of nowhere and just like take like they're playing well. They I are mean, they're, they're not playing horrible. And and this is the this is what you're gonna get from this group of avalanche players with all these guys that they're down. What's going to happen is against teams like Boston, even Winnipeg, you're, you'll be in the game, but you're just going to struggle to to like have good opportunities materialize because, like we said a couple episodes ago, like you don't have that wave after wave after wave of just offensive greatness coming at you. You have a top line, which is now the top line is even decimated. Yeah, 
And you don't have that just line after line after line. They just keep pounding you. And, you know, the Avs hung around like against Boston. And, and they, they same thing with, with you know, well, the Winnipeg game got a little bit out of hand. But you're, you're, you have a team right now that when you play teams like Buffalo – when you tonight against the Flyers, you'll be more than competitive in those games because even the guys that you have up right now, that a lot of Colorado Eagle guys should and, and you know should be able to hang with. And I'm not trying to like minimize the guys that play for Buffalo and 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 they're just not that good of teams. So you can compete with them because you have the guys that are that are your superstars can just lift everybody up and you can beat those teams. You can. But when you go up against a team like Boston, when you go up against a team like Winnipeg, I know you won both games against Dallas, which is good. Like you're, it, it's just going to be – you don't walk into every game thinking we got this. And, and we didn't against Boston. That was the first time in a long time where I felt like going into that game, probably not going to win this one. Yeah. I, I can't tell you the last time I've had that feeling for Colorado. It's been a few years Exactly. Where I've gone into a game thinking they are not the favorite to win this game. And I was just about to say that's the difference in depth and that top line mentality. Like we have, yes, we have Miko, we have Kale, we have Nate, but relying on top line talent is what made game 82 exciting all those years ago. And then <laughs> losing to number one Nashville in the playoffs. If that's what you want, congratulations. That's what we're going to get. If you want, what we had last year where we clinched everything two weeks before the end of the regular season. And we had time to play around. We had time to call up Ben Myers. We had time to get goofy with our lines and really figure things out. That's where the depth needs to step up. And it's, it's, it's hard. It's really hard. Like, it's not like the avalanche anticipated this. Like you put your roster down at the beginning of the year. You feel like you feel very confident in where your team is going. The whole team top down Bednar included, we need to adjust. Things aren't working. You Like you said, you can beat the bottom half of the league, mm -hmm. but it's no longer the avalanche are rolling into, insert name here, they're right. going to win the game. Right. You're right. So, like, like you know, right now, going into Philly, I feel good about that. I, yeah. I feel good that you can beat Philly. As, as decimated as you are, I, I feel pretty confident you can beat the Flyers. Going back to what you said about the strength and conditioning, the reason it has nothing to do with that is because, the like, what does a strength and conditioning coach, what are they going to do to protect Arturi Lekinen from getting body slammed to the ground? <laughs> Don't How go break your arm tonight. Yeah. Thanks. <clears throat> right. Uh, strength and conditioning is just that. A lot of it is conditioning. It's not like the avalanche are, you know, pulling groins or pulling hamstrings, just skating up the ice. That would be strength and conditioning. Yeah. But when you're getting body, like it's a physical game. Most of these injuries are because of a specific play that the other team had a hand in. So no, it's it's <clears throat> not that. It's a, a lot of it is just sheer bad luck. And and I'm sorry, like I, I'm not I'm not using it as an excuse as to be like, well, you know, just throw the towel in and this this season is no, you're gonna get these guys back. But right now, there, I had a conversation with some people on Twitter, very you know, uh, docile conversation. And we weren't like shouting it, but one guy was like, I'm, I'm tired of hearing like, we're not the best team in the league. We're the best team in the league. Like, well, no, we're, we're not, not. <laughs> stats and, and, and standings tell you we're not the best team in the league. And it, it, that's not because they're not playing well. It's because they have a ton of injuries and the injuries that they have are huge names. Yeah. List them off for me, please. Oh just, yeah. Just, just so, just so we know again, who we're missing. Go if you're wearing hats, take them off and respect these names. We now have Arturi Lakinen. We have Josh Manson, Larry Nachushkin, Gabe Landeskog, Bo Byram, Erod, Curtis McDermott. So, I mean, th that's a lot of top that's, line players. And it, that's <clears throat> not including Bowers. Nope. And a couple, a couple of the Eagles, I believe, they're still listed on the Eagles. Uh, Cal wasn't players. hurt. Cal was just sick. I think Cal had the flu or something like that. Right? And Oh. Yes. And to your point about um, the physical play, mm -hmm. I also don't want to hear the Avs aren't a physical team or we're getting out physicaled. That's not <laughs> even a word. Yeah. College that I know. Um, 
we've had Manson fight, we've had McDonald fight, we've had England fight. We have we have fighters, we have physicality. Bo Byram and Kale McCarr are playing very physical well, when Bo's playing, are mm-hmm. playing very physical hockey. Miko Rantanen, very physical hockey. They're playing a very physical form of what they were last year, which mm-hmm. I have found surprising. So don't don't come at me with we're getting out physical because we're just a fast team. No, we're both. Yeah, but they're they're not physical first. They, no. they they are like they will play a physical game if they need to. That's the beauty of the Avalanche is they can adapt to what style they need to. Like they're going to play their game, but if you're going to get physical with them, they, they'll they'll they will do it right back. But they don't go head hunting. They're not looking to start a fight. They yep. will finish one. That's the but last that's never resort. Been their game. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I don't have an issue with them with their physicality. Um, I, I think it's fine. But when you know. Boston was out to set a tone of of really just being the dominant team physically. Um, and, and you know, I guess if you're looking, I don't know. Let me see. I get the stats here as far as hits go. Well, that's, uh, they were, they, Avs out hit them 27 to 24 as far as hits go. But, it, but Bruin, the Bruins played a very physical game. And I don't want to say it got the Avs out of their game. It doesn't. Uh, but they just don't have the the talent to, okay, we'll match your physicality, but then we're going to beat you on the back end with our speed and our, yep. our talent and scoring chances. They just don't have that part of it right now. And, th- and that's why at the beginning, why I referenced the depth, because usually the Avalanche will play physical if they have to, but they'll hurt you on the scoreboard. And that's something we mm-hmm. said time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. But mm-hmm. if the depth's not hurting you on the scoreboard, then you're kind of resorting to the physicality, not to win the game, to survive the game. And that's yeah. where the difference of this Avalanche team is right now. Yeah. So it's it. we joke about it that the Avs are like injured year in and year out. They are. I mean, a lot of teams are. Abs, it's not just, you know, just for the Avalanche. But um, this, is, this is nuts. And the one thing I was talking about with uh, some of the people on Twitter was a lot in previous years, a lot of these injuries were spaced out. Yeah, you know I mean, you get guys back and then you'd have a couple weeks together and another guy would get injured and you can overcome that to have this many guys, this, key, this many key guys out all at the same time, I think is kind of unprecedented when it comes to, to avalanche injuries and, and, you know, the roster they're putting out there. It's, it's crazy. I, mean, I haven't seen that's including COVID protocol because even the Nashville game that we had where we barely had a team. And referees for that game. Mm. This is still <laughs> beating that. Yeah. But you gotta go out there and you gotta put your best skate forward and then you gotta you gotta try to win the game. You know, no one's gonna feel sorry for you, especially you know, a defending Stanley Cup champion. So um the Avs did that when they went out and they faced off against the Bruins. So uh let's hear from Athletic Greens and then we'll talk about the Bruins game specifically and uh, also have a sound check to get to for that game. Uh but first athletic greens and what do most people do around the holiday season uh they kind of stuff their face and maybe get off of that diet bandwagon and say like i'll just start it on the new kyle's pointing to himself right now yeah and then come the new year they will get the new year's resolutions going get the new year's resolution routine going right now and do that with Athletic Greens. What is it? It is one scoop of Athletic Greens into your morning water, and you are absorbing 75 high-quality vitamins, minerals, and whole force, whole food-sourced superfoods. Say that 10 times fast. Probiotics and aptogens to help you start your day right. It helps. It's a special blend of ingredients that support your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, your recovery, your focus, even your aging all of the important things. It costs you less than $3 a day and you're investing in your health and it's cheaper than your cold brew and coffee habits. So you are investing in the all-in-one nutritional insurance. So right now it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with a convenient daily nutrition. Just one scoop of Athletic Greens in your morning water and that is it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health and to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Once again, athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional 
insurance. All right, sir. So this uh, game against the Bruins, yeah, we, we knew it was going to have to be almost a flawless game. This was a uh, Mortal Kombat flawless victory is what it needed to be. Um, you, you needed specific things to go right for you. One was if you were given a power play, you were going to have to score. And you hate to tell a team, like, you got to be 100% on your power plays. Uh, but that was really, like, one of the ways that the Avalanche could have stuck around in this game. And I give them credit here because – they didn't, I think, what were they, 1 for 0 for 3. I'm sorry. They were 0 for 3 on power play, so they didn't get those. And they got down, you know, thing early in the second. And you're just sitting there watching. It's like, oh, man, like how, how bad is this going to get? And they kept it there. They kept it at, at 3 to nothing. They got one from Cogliano. And then you're like, okay, let's see what can happen here. If we can get some greasy goal. I know, I know there's it's very difficult to – you know, uh, put up some some high danger scoring chances right now, but who knows what? That's what makes hockey great. Um, and then it, you know, bang bang, just back to back for the Bruins, and they they get two, they tack on two more. But those didn't come until less than five minutes left in the game, so it was three to one with four and a half minutes to go. I'm sorry, but when you're sitting there watching that going into a game that you think that is going to be very difficult to win, you're still your attention's on this game. You 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 had you had an opportunity. It got away, but, uh, you know, I, I got to give the, the Avalanche some credit here for how we were talking about in the first with all the injuries that you had. You hung around against an excellent team. Especially after that first period, even though the score was 2 nothing, you felt good. You felt like, oh, one of those patented Bednar intermission speeches, and they'll be right back around, and they'll get the scoring going. Didn't mm -hmm. happen, but they held their own for as long as they possibly could. Yeah. Um, Frankie, I get it. He let up some, some, some ducks. I get it. But I mean, Colorado number one power power play in the league. Boston number two. Mm -hmm. So you knew that was going to be. If you're going to capitalize, you need to capitalize. Boston was able to get one. So way to go, penalty kills for both teams. But the Avs held their own. There wasn't that much where you're just throwing up your hands and saying this is an ugly game this is boston's 14th home win in a row yeah how does that sound was, familiar that was kind of what we were yeah. doing last year yep and you have that buzzsaw when you uh you went to go face the avalanche in ball arena where everybody's like oh it's gonna be tough to tackle them well that's boston now we're in a different spot and for how the avs played in this different role i still i still feel pretty good about where they're going but we got a long way to go to get back to where we belong. Yeah, and I thought they started the game pretty well. They did. Um, you know, but but you could see that that switch that Boston could flip. You know, you, they, they were kind of just getting their footing, it seemed like, for the first couple shifts, uh, per shift, I should say, maybe like one or two shifts for all four lines. And then they were just like, okay, we're just going to step it up now. Um, and and they th that's just – you, you see the avalanche do that so many times. You know what I mean, so just we, it's almost like we were watching like an avalanche team in different colors. Yep. They just, if they, when they want to turn it on and you, you just make a mistake and they will make you pay for it. Uh, even on the, I think it was their first goal. I think what, mm, was it their first one or second one? It was when Galchenyuk was playing footsie with the puck and he couldn't get it out of the zone. Like you, you had to have clears in that game. Yep. You had to have good zone exits. You had to clear the puck when you had the opportunity. You couldn't mess around with it. He did. Bing, bang, boom. Goal for, for Boston. It was either the first one or the second one. I can't remember which one it was. But they will do that. They will exploit your, your mistakes. Um, and when you have, again, when you have an avalanche team that, that is prone to them right now, because you, Galchenyuk, this is what, his third game with the Avs? Like, it's going to happen. So you had to minimize that stuff. You couldn't let that happen. It's just it's it's a lot to ask though. <laughs> so you're saying there's a team that could flip on a switch and beat you with wave after wave of offensive talent and make a mediocre goalie look like mm. a Vesna winner. Ooh. That yeah. Sounds like a good team. I've heard that before. <laughs> um were you a little surprised they, they put Francois in there? <sighs> yes and no. Mm. Uh, how uh, you gotta try them both and you knew the outcome 
was going to kind of be similar. I don't want Yorgiev shelled. I wanted to see what Frankie looked like in that situation. Hostile environment, hot home streak. Mm -hmm. Uh, He held up for most of it, but then it started getting leaky. And everything was kind of collapsing in front of him as well. It wasn't a good thing, but Frankie can learn from it, but you don't want Yorgiev learning those lessons. I, I thought I thought Francis played as best as he could. Yep. I really did. Yep. Um but I don't know. I, I, I was surprised. I when uh I think it was Connor uh McGahey who put it up first saying that you know Frankie was first off the ice after the skate and that insinuates who's gonna be your start like that. Wow. Okay, okay. Knowing you're going up against Boston, knowing your next game is against Philly, um mm. Why wouldn't put your A one guy in there? I, I I don't know, but you you face the same Boston team after Philly. Oh, so you're saying give them a shot? Yep. Yeah. Let, let Frankie go into them. the hostile environment. <laughs> we just spent the whole first segment talking about injuries. It's the last person we need injured right now is Yorgiev. Hang on. Go ahead. Keep you talking. got you got Philly, and then in two days you got Boston again in yeah, Ball Arena. So... So why would you do Georgiev back to not back to back, but with one day off? Uh, well, I mean, and I guess I don't know. I, why I don't coach, man. Because <laughs> no, you're, you're I'd be in my own head so many times. You're playing both goalies. Yeah, you don't want Marchand skating into Georgiev in Boston, hostile crowd. You don't want that collapse well, on Georgiev. Mm. I mean, what, what's Boston going to do? Are they playing Allmark again? I don't know. The, and you and at the time of recording, we don't know who's really starting against Philly. Uh, we don't, but I, I can't imagine that they would put Francois in again. No, I don't. Unless you're going to put Georgiev on a, on a nice rest to have it, him come back against Boston at home. It's like this is a know. it's a weird situation. Like there, I agree, yeah, right, putting man. Frankie right. in against Boston was interesting, but now you put yourself in a weird situation. Do you put your GF in against Philly and then again against Boston, or do you put Frankie back in against Boston again? Mm-hmm. What what do you do here? This is a, this is an interesting. One. Yeah, I mean they they they're used to. It. I mean, and this is a this is a busy month. We talked about it. What, yeah. what the month looks like. So both these guys are going to get playing time for this month. You know, you can't just run with one guy through the month of December. You'll just burn them out. So as far as, I mean, are, are the Avalanche less interested with who the opponent is and just sticking to the script of how we're doing this in terms of when Francois comes in to spell Georgiev? Or is it is matchup related? I, I don't know. Like normally, I feel like the Avalanche would just go, no, we have a schedule. We don't care who we play. We know that we can beat whoever on any given day. You have to look at that differently now. You don't have the team that can go like you have to put your give in there to try to bail you out. All the stuff that we were saying in the beginning of the season. Oh, we don't need a goalie to really bail us out. Our defense will hold a hold everybody in check. That's not happening right now because you have guys down. You're, you're down uh, Manson. You're down Byram. You have England. You have McDonald in there. You know what I mean? Like you have guys that for a defensive side are somewhat of a liability on the offensive end. You're not getting a ton of offensive opportunities because you're down all those guys we talked about. So now you have to make a decision for goalie who the opponent is where you didn't have to do that before. So I don't know, man, like this is, this is so Frankie be... against the flyers and your gift against Boston. Uh, yeah, that's what I would have done to begin with, but I you've already played. Now. I mean, you, I guess you could still do it. Yeah. Get get that bad taste out of your mouth in Boston. Win one against Philly. Congratulations, you won us a game, Frankie. Sit down and earn your rest. Hey, Yorgiev, you enjoy that almost week off? Come on and play against Boston. Now let's see what you can do at home. Okay, I would do it. I would do it. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you on that. Um, we talked about uh, England. You got into a nice uh, tilt with Felino. Um, and you know what? The hit that he put on Felino could have been a lot worse. He, yeah. he, he saw Felino's numbers. He still checked him into the board, but he did pull. He gave him a nice hit, 
but he pulled up. He could have really injured him. I get why Felino didn't like that and why they dropped gloves. But hey, man, like you have a young buck going up against Felino, um, and he held his own. He did. And Felino kind of grabbed him and fell on him, which was dangerous because yep. Angle's helmet was off. Uh, he could have, you know, had some whiplash and hit the ice. I don't think he did. I mean, he played the rest of the game, so I don't think he did. But um, I think a lot of Avalanche fans liked seeing that because a lot of people were on him for these goalie issues that he's had. So that was good to see. Um, I don't know. Anybody else really stick out to you that that kind of played well in this one? Oh, when it comes mm-hmm. to playing well, everybody – nobody played bad. Mm-hmm. I don't think there was anybody that was glaringly bad. It was just – you honestly, you got the sum of what's on the ice right now in Colorado, and even just being mediocre to okay, it's not enough to not topple that, the no. top 16 – in the league right now i thought uh taves played one of his best defensive games he played great and he had to he was always on either brad martian or pasternak had a great defensive play when pasternak was kind of on a breakaway um just kind of swung a stick knocked the puck away i thought taves played a great defensive game um when lekkinen went down to start the second Jean-Luc Foodie was up on the top line That's right. with, with McKinnon and Rantanen. So I don't know if that was Bednar kind of saying like, hey, it's, it's you know, two to nothing. Uh, this is going to be a difficult mountain to climb. Let's just throw the kid on there, get some, get some experience up there. Because he didn't do it for, for the entirety of the rest of the game, I don't believe. Because um, I think – I think I think I saw Confer up there a couple times. I don't know, but he was moving around. But to start the second, Foodie was up there. He's playing. He's playing well. He, I, you can tell he's getting a little bit more comfortable. But he's taking some bad, bad penalties. Yeah, it's starting to become a little bit of a problem. Um, and you know, I think I enjoyed everybody that wasn't the top line in that Boston game. I'm liking what I'm seeing out of everybody that's not the top. Top line is not good defensively right now because they're having mm-hmm. to shoulder so much weight of trying to get, get this team going. Um, if you want to score on the avalanche, it's it's the top line right now. That's mm-hmm. that's definitely it's it's leaky there, but again, they're trying to be the offense, the defense, the heart and soul. Um, there's nobody else stepping up right now. So but I do like JT Confer. He's starting to warm up a little bit. Nui's starting to look good. So I like what I see. I just, again, I, for the 8 millionth time, I'd like to see these guys build on it mm. and carry that into the Philly game. But, hey, yeah. Boston had nice reverse retros too. They do. Yeah. I will say they that's one that. one positive we could take out of the night. I was sleeping on those jerseys. Those are very, very nice. They're nice. I think the Devils played in theirs too, man. The Devils are oh, – I that color combo is nice, man. I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm prejudiced. Like it. All right, let's hear from Bet Online, and then we'll get to our soundtrack and uh, pretty much wrap it up. We're just talking about this Philly game, what to expect from that. But we got BetOnline.net, your number one source for spedding. Sp- spedding. Spedding. What is that? Did I just create a new uh, sports? No, you must have watched the Bronco game. I did. Uh, you know, <laughs> well, I saw a meme that was like, you, you know why Amer- Americans hate soccer? They If they wanted to watch a team just run around and not do anything, they just watch the Denver Broncos. I saw Terrible. one that said, Broncos Terrible. country, let's hide. Oh, man. Oh. Go listen to uh, Cody and Sayer if you want to get angry with the Broncos, please. Uh, but you can get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there from football to basketball and soccer, esports and hockey. We've got it all at betonline.net. But at least the Broncos did cover. <laughs> I mean, they only lost by one. So uh, if you're betting them, you you, you won. So Congratulations. That's a plus. Uh, and if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline at He besmirched the name of the Denver Broncos and they cut him right out. As we- there, there we go. Uh, yeah, betonline.net, where the game starts. Boom. All right, sir. So, uh, a quick sound check that we have to get to. Uh, you can follow the uh, playlist that 
that we create every time the Avs play a game. We will pick a song that we feel best summarizes the action. For this one, we got the Avalanche and the Bruins. What do you got? And you can follow this on uh, Spotify. Just go to Spotify, search LOA Soundcheck. This is volume number two. Follow along and uh, listen to the new tracks that we put up there. What do you got for this one, Avalanche and Bruins? It's the Boston Bruins. There's no way you could do a Boston Bruins game without picking Dropkick Murphys. And honestly, my visual going into this game just was summarized by the way we left. It felt like we were packaging up the boys and sending them on a ship. Almost like to like, yeah. it was like one of those D Day boats, or like we're just putting them together, going to war. We know they're not all coming back, um, mm-hmm. shipping off to Boston. Yeah, I, I, you probably saw how I posted that song. I put the I lyric, my leck. In, I lost my leck. <laughs> I'm a sailor that. peg and I lost my leck. That's pretty much what we did. So, um, yeah. Just the classic Massachusetts band right there. For me, I, I went with uh, Static X. Good old Wayne Static. Rest mm-hmm. in peace for him. Um, just with all the injuries, uh, they have a song on, I think, their best album called Shadow Zone, uh, called New Pain. And that's really what it is. It's just yep. day in and day out. It's just a new injury for the Avalanche. So I had to go with focus on the injuries. Maybe if I'm, I'm focusing on it, it's just like, It'll stop happening. I don't want to ignore it because it's real. So if we just keep talking about it, maybe it's some reverse psychology and we'll just stop having injuries. Yeah, that's right. I don't think. Yeah. We need to stop talking about injuries and face offs. Oh, yeah. Which they were 30, let's see, uh, absolute 38% of the face offs won compared to the 62% for the Bruins. So there you go. That's not good. Uh, yeah, no. So quickly, what, we got the, the struggling. Flyers um, started the season pretty good, and and I think a lot of people were surprised. I thought people, were, I think a lot of people were just thinking the Flyers were going to fall off the face of the earth from from game one. Um, you know, I, I, Tortorella is not my kind of coach, no. uh, but he does get like the best out of, of certain players. I'm going to say all his players, <laughs> but uh, if he can craft his own team, uh, they will be okay. And he hasn't done that yet in Philly because he just got there. So, but the thing with Tortorella is he kind of wears out his welcome. So will he be able to kind of get guys in here? That remains to be seen if he can hang around for a few years. But, you know, right now they're kind of settling into where we all thought they were going to be. The only team worse than them in the division is Columbus, but Columbus is on their heels. And, and you know, for as far as the Flyers go, I think they lost 10 in a row recently. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. And then they won one game against the Islanders and then have lost the last two. So if it wasn't for the uh three to one win against the Islanders, um, they'd be on a 13 game losing streak right now. Um it, it's it's just not good in Philly land, and that's kind of what you thought was going to happen. So yeah, even as decimated as the Avalanche are, they need to win this game. You you hit it right there with that last sentence. They need to win this game because the Philly Flyers are broken. Hmm. They are a broken team. You know who leads time on ice for the Philly Flyers? Who? Tony D'Angelo. He leads them in ice time? That's 24-37. Wow. Tell me your team's not broken. <laughs> I mean, I mean, if you're relying on Carter Hart, there's no offense going with this team. It's one of those that it's the only reason you hear about the Flyers is because of a Tortorella soundbite. It's they're not doing anything. Mm-mm. And it's that's bad. Like you hear about Columbus because they're doing better, but they're still bad. You hear about every other team. You never hear about the Flyers other than Tortorella said this. Isn't this crazy? How yeah. in the world is the Avalanche need to win this game? There's no might have to no need yeah and it's Tortorella not, just said something the other day that was you know the the sound bite that's what you get you don't get the highlights of the game you get the Tortorella sound bite after the game um they i mean you just look at their stats and it's like okay Kevin Hayes uh he's got 25 points in 25 games played okay he's still a minus 10 but you know he's on a bad team most of these guys are going to be minus um, and then you have Travis Konecki, who has played 19 games and has 21 points. So there's your two guys. After that, it's just a free fall. 
Yeah. Uh, if Joel Farabee, who's played 25 games, 14 points. Tony D'Angelo is your fourth best scorer, 24 points, 12 points. Or 24 games played, 12 points. So it just falls off. They just don't get offense. The, Carter Hart's hasn't been bad. I mean, he's giving up 2.82 goals a game. His save percentage is 911. Uh, but they need a lot of help. <laughs> yeah, <they're>, it's <laughs> you know, it's a cry for help, everyone. <laughs> Look at the stats. There's a clue in there. Yeah, he hasn't been terrible, but he's just not getting help in the offense. They don't have offense. And I've and I've watched it. a couple Flyers games. It's not like the team just doesn't work together. The pieces don't fit. And mm. trying to win games when your pieces don't fit. Like that's why you see it so top heavy, and then it's a free fall on the stat on the stats. Like this team is just broken, and mm -hmm. it's very hard to watch. And it's one of those that you almost have to throw your hands up as a Flyer fan, where you're like, "We'll have to address this next year because there's nothing we could do other than selling the team right now and starting fresh." <laughs> like it's that bad, and it's rough. And again, for the Avalanche, if you lose this game, we've got serious, serious problems here. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see how it all pans out, but it's not a game that that you want to lose, especially if you're coming off of a loss. You know what I mean? Like you're you're kind of going back Boston and forth again. Right. Yeah, right, right. You're staring at a three game losing streak in the face if if you lose this one, and you know with the edge, you're going back and forth. You're winning, win, loss, win, loss. Like it's they haven't got like a streak going um, in the past couple of weeks, but you know. The games that you, you want to put in your back pocket and get a, a nice, easy two points, this is one. This is one. So we'll see how it goes. But uh, we will definitely be back tomorrow to break it all down and uh, discuss the last one before they head home. But, again, Boston is staring at them. So you have to get this. You have to get these two. You got to. Um, all right. Well, like I said, we'll be back tomorrow. But until then, appreciate everybody tuning in and making this your first listen of the day. He is Mr. Shaggy Von Doom, Kyle Sullivan, and I am Chris Maselli. This is the Locked On Avalanche Podcast. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy the game.